Kyle Larson is bored and frustrated with his Indianapolis 500 attempt so far. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. And on Thursday, Kyle Larson spoke to Peacock as he was waiting around for his car to be prepared to go out and run. And he said that it's been boring and frustrating. He said it's been a day of not a whole lot for him. His team had to change the engine in the back of his number 17 car on Thursday morning and then proceeded to only get him on track for 29 laps over the eight hours of practice on Thursday. Not exactly ideal. 29 laps at 39 seconds a lap comes out to being just around 18 minutes of running for Kyle Larson, a little over 18 minutes of running for Kyle Larson in a day where you had eight hours of practice available. Now the team started to change the engine before the 10 a.m. start time for practice, but still only managed to get him out on track for 29 laps, 22 of those before he went out and ran a mock qualifying run in the last half hour of the day. Just an absolutely abysmal approach to the Thursday before Fast Friday when Kyle Larson definitely needs to have laps at the Speedway. Especially as you approach Fast Friday when qualifying setups we put on the car and qualifying is looming on Saturday and this guy and team fully expect to not be in that last row shootout, you would think you want to get more laps for this driver on track. He turned the third fewest amount of laps on Thursday. Seeing Ray Robb only turned 14 laps, but that's because he had to get out and pray in between each lap. And honestly, it looked exhausting from where I was sitting. And then you have Linus Lundquist. He turned 23 laps, but he also smacked the turn two wall pretty hard. Uh, and his day was done. But he had turned 23 laps before Kyle Larson, I think, probably had even gotten on track for more than four laps at that point. Not exactly the hot start. McLaren, at this pace, are giving Kyle Larson the Fernando Alonso treatment. Remember back in 2019 when they failed to make the race because they had the wrong car, the wrong paint color, the wrong steering wheel, and then they had the, they bought a setup sheet, couldn't figure out that that was in standard, not in metric, and they completely screwed up the entire car. Yeah, it might not be that bad yet, but a one-off attempt for McLaren just seemingly hasn't gone that well. Juan Montoya's done it pretty decently. Uh, for, Tony Kanaan did it decently last year. But man, when they bring a driver in from another series, they just seem to completely lose their minds. And I don't know if it's McLaren being trying to be super safe and like make sure that this is a success or what, but there seems to be some sort of disconnect here. I mean, at the end of the day, Rick Hendrick went to Team Penske first and asked them to run the double with Kyle Larson before settling on McLaren. So back before last year's Indianapolis 500 in 2023, Rick Hendrick had approached Roger Penske and asked him to run Kyle in the double. At the time, Roger said, I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to expand to four cars and run a one-off because we want to get our three cars back to where they need to be, which is honestly fair because in the few years prior to last year, they had not been contenders at the Indianapolis 500, which is uncharacteristic for, for Penske. Then, of course, last May, they go on to win a controversial Indy 500 with Joseph Newgarden, public enemy number one, an Indy car now, and things change. But at that point... Rick Hendrick and Aaron McLaren had already agreed to run the double with Kyle Larson this year. And at the end of the day, Chevy wants this to be a success. Rick Hendrick wants this to be a success. They need to figure this out because you can't have Larson standing around telling NBC Peacock that he's bored and frustrated because the guy needs to go out there and get laps. I mean, he, at the end of his interview, he said, I just want to go out and kill time by putting laps in. And I will say, at the end of Thursday, they did manage to get him back out on track in that final half hour to run a mock qualifying run. Not trimmed out at all, not with the boost turned up. He ran a 222 mile per hour average, which is fine. The car looked stable, he looked comfortable. 222 is certainly nothing to be ashamed of. But when you have qualifying looming on Friday, you would think that you would want to get him out as much as possible on Thursday so that he could have more practice running around other cars, getting in dirty air, feeling what the wash is going to feel like, understanding how the time passes, understand how the time being passed so you don't lose too much time. And instead they only got him out for 29 laps and not much you know, running in a pack or anything like that. Now on Fast Friday, you can pretty much guarantee that most of these cars are going to be trimmed out. Most people are going to approach Friday as you know doing mock qualifying runs to get ready for Saturday. That way they can ensure that they lock themselves into the Fast 12 to run again on Sunday and they avoid being in that last row shootout on Sunday as well. For McLaren and Larson, again, you would think that there would have been some urgency to get him out on track and there just wasn't. On Wednesday, he did run 54 laps, majority of those laps in traffic, exactly what he needed to do, trying to understand how this you know package works. And I know there's going to be a lot of fans that are like, Kyle Larson is the most naturally gifted you know race car driver on the planet. This and that, he can get in anything and be fast. Completely understand that. I agree with you. He is one of the most talented race car drivers we've ever seen. But you would still like to have some reps, some understanding of what this car is going to do. 
I mean, if Kyle Larson had never raced a dirt car before, and then you tell him to just go race the Knoxville Nationals with, you know, limited practice, he's going to be like, all right, like I can do this, but am I going to be as good as I possibly could be if I had more practice? No, of course not. Like that's the 10,000 hours approach with what Malcolm Gladwell, I think says that. Whether you believe it or not, having more reps and having more on-track time is definitely beneficial. So now Kyle Larson approaches Fast Friday, you know, having an idea on what to expect. You know, he has probably turned, what, around a little under 150 laps so far this week, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. You have guys turning a lot more laps than that. And for a lot of these guys, they maybe don't need to turn that many laps because they've done this before. They have this experience. They know what the car feels like, and they have a good understanding of what the car is going to do in certain situations. Larson still doesn't have that. That's why I continue to stress that like on-track practice time is great for him. He needs to be out there. And maybe McLaren has this all figured out, right? It just seems like there might be a disconnect between the Larson camp and the McLaren camp at this point and some frustrations on why we aren't out here running when they should be running at, you know, at this point. So Larson's got to approach fast Friday, lock in and turn some big speeds. I wouldn't be shocked to see 234, 235 on the board at some point on Friday. And then of course, qualifying looms on Saturday and he wants to try to lock himself in. The good news for him is McLaren certainly has some speed. Pato Award pace a session. His other teammates in both Alexander Rossi and Calum Eilat showed some speed as well. And they seem to have pretty good drivability in their cars. It's just getting that 17 car up there with them now and making sure that he's on track. So Larson's bored and frustrated, which, you know, obviously you're always going to get a very candid response from Kyle Larson. He doesn't really ever seem to mince what his feelings are. He might not be outwardly angry, but like, Larson's going to tell you how he feels, essentially. He always seems to have done that in his NASCAR interviews for the most part, as well as his dirt interviews. IndyCar is no different at this point. So let me know in the comments what you think about his attempt so far. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.